Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at deadheading and specifically deadheading petunias. And then we're also going to take a look at pansies. The specific reason for this video is because a number of years ago, I started this YouTube channel and then I gave up. The initial video filmed was very poorly done in my opinion i've grown since then and my filming quality everything has picked up however my old video is in the top spot for search results when it comes to deadheading petunias and my hope is that this video was going to kick it right out of first place so if you could please give this video a thumbs up let me know in the comments down below how much you love petunias and let's just try to get the interaction on this video super, super high in hopes of kicking out my other video, which is ranking and search that it just gives me a bad name. <laughs> let's just say that much. Without further ado, let's jump into the science of deadheading. So I have spoken a little bit about my planting style for my petunias in containers. I do one wave petunia per pot, and this pot actually is pretty large. I only have one wave petunia in there. I find if I put any more by midsummer, everything's looking a little leggy and a little bit overgrown, mostly because I'm not able to supply the volume of water it needs to thrive in its environment. So hence the reason why I only put one petunia plant in per pot. However, with wave petunias, we do not need to deadhead. And the reason for this is because we have a genetically modified organism, meaning we've turned off the switch that tells the plant after it has formed a flower and has um, made the seed cluster that it is time to move on and make way for the new baby plant to thrive and reproduce. So the wave petunia have that genetic coach shut off in them. However, there is still a ton of petunias out there that do not have this. Um, basically any petunia outside of the wave brand, you do still need to deadhead. So let's take a look at this little piece of the pie and what we're looking for when we're actually deadheading. So here I have a piece of my wave petunia that I have pulled off. However, the anatomy for the wave petunia is identical to that of a regular petunia because we have genetically the same format, we just are missing certain code that tells things to turn off or on. So this obviously is a petunia flower that is in full bloom. We don't wanna remove those because those are very, very pretty. However, if we notice that our petunias are getting very, very leggy, meaning we have a long string with very few offshoots or very little flowering, we can cut this back and we can cut it back as far as we like. And what will happen is we'll end up with a uh, fork happening at the node, which will get a bushier plant. So if you're no noticing it's very sad looking or it's not top heavy, like you don't have a lot of top foliage action, and everything's just kind of hanging over the sides, then you actually will want to trim it back. And this rule also applies to wave petunias. If your wave petunia is looking a little blah, just give it a little bit of a haircut on top, even just on the top layers, and it will bounce back up over time. So we can do that for legginess, but for these full blooms, we can leave them in place. Our other stage of growing is this stage here. We have two different stages. So we have the stage where we have this green flower inside. Um, it's kind of like a little node. And then we have a flower that has not yet unraveled both of these are still valid and they're still going to turn in to this very beautiful flower that we see here we just have to give it some time so that little green almost flower type format and then this tightly coiled flower is still viable now our other formats of flowers are going to be these ones which are very very clearly dried up limp and on their way out so if we look at this one here we can see the flower is still attached to our ovary or her ovum of the flower and if we pull this flower off we can see there is an actual seed ball you can't really see it on camera very well um, we can see a seed ball in there sometimes the flower will be completely detached and we will just see the round 
uh, flowers on the out or the round leaves you guys are gonna think they're leaves they actually are um, an organ of the flower itself so you're gonna see these round leaves and inside of this if we pulled all this back we would see our um, fertilized ovary inside which will be again that little green ball when we're deadheading we don't want to simply just pull off the flower and leave behind the seed because the seed or this ovum in there is actually what's sending the signals back to our mother plant telling the mother plant hey listen up we're done um you need to go away so the babies can make more so we actually want to pull this off right back to the base so we're going to take off our stem and then our surrounding leaves of our flower and then our ovum inside all has to go and that goes for all of the ones that are flowerless so really make sure you look at your plant and you pull away all these odds and ends that look like that so that is your anatomy of a petunia and how to go about deadheading. You definitely want to make sure you're getting right down into the base of the plant and removing all of these. Like, see how there's three here? All these need to go right down to the base. We need to get rid of them because we need to get rid of this part right here, which is the part that is sending the signal to the mama plant, this little ball there. Um, telling it that its life cycle is over and it can cease to exist. So let's go check out pansies and take a look at how to deadhead those. So when we look at pansies, it's pretty much the exact same thing. A pansy has very similar anatomy to that of a petunia and any flower really can follow these exact same rules. So we have a cutting from a pansy back in the yard. Again, if it is leggy, we can simply just cut it back to encourage Y or bushing of the plant. We have a flower that is in full bloom that obviously we do not want to cut off. We have the start of a bud happening there, which is compact. These, uh, these guard leaves are guarding the baby bud inside. And then we have a, a plant or a flower that's in the midst of unfolding. Now, I didn't have any that were on their way out, mostly because I continually deadhead uh, pretty regularly. A good sign that the pansy is on its way out is when the leaves go from flat faced or inward faced to outward flopped back or kind of rolling back onto the stem. It's a good sign that it is almost on its way out. Now, when we look at the actual pansy itself, it has this very long um, stem leading up to the flower. We can just simply pluck off the head of the flower, making sure we grab all the guard leaves um, as well as the flower itself, which will then remove that ovum or that ovary from the pl actual plant. However, I find specifically more so with pansies than with petunias, these little sticks sticking up kind of look a little ridiculous so you will want to actually clip these back um, right back to the actual stem so you will have just a tiny little spike and then the majority of the plant will be here now keep in mind none of these flowers are garbage i highly encourage you learn how to press flowers these are very satisfying flowers to press both petunias and the pansies themselves so just a recommendation um something that i enjoy and have a whole video on how to do quick press flowers in the microwave if you guys want to check that out i also have a blog post on that that goes into a bit more in detail but other than that i hope you guys enjoyed a video all about how to deadhead pansies and petunias i will talk to you guys next time bye